Uh, hello, uh, good morning. Today we are going to present in this webinar the um, uh, thermal structural copper analysis uh, from Civil Femme 2021, uh, focusing fire protection design for structures, for civil structures. So well, uh, the advanced thermal structural analysis in Civil Femme um, uh, involves uh, calculating temperature distribution, steady state or transient, step by step within the uh, structure due to thermal boundary conditions that could be conduction, convection or radiation, and to determine the thermal effects on it, such as induced thermal stresses and combined effects with other structural loads and structural behaviors. Um, also, the structural uh, behavior can be non-linear and steady and transient analysis. So, uh, we, it is a completely couple non-linear analysis where thermal and, and structural analysis are solved step by step together. Uh, well, uh, these, these capabilities from Civil Fem 2021, um, Advanced uh, Thermal Analysis, uh, allows to solve all civil engineering problems such as early earth thermal cracking in concrete due to heat of uh, hydration, also the effects of ambient temperature, solar radiation, fire, or any type of thermal um, uh, origin. Uh, apply to the structure and it could be from a point, from an area or volume, volumetric uh, thermal loads and combine them with the uh, structural loads, calculating stresses on the model uh, from uh, and combining them uh, from thermal or, um, or structural loads. So well, and the aim of this webinar, as we have said, is to present uh, civil fan capabilities for fire protection and provide a general overview of the software as well. Uh, civil FEM um, thermal structural features, the main ones are thermal orthotopic material properties, thermal conductivity and specific heat that are uh, temperature dependent, so these properties depends on the temperature and are updated every step with the new temperature values on the integration points. Also material nonlinear behavior, uh, the properties, the material properties, non-linear material properties are temperature de de uh, temperature dependent, such as, for an example, for a steel, the yielding point uh, depends on the temperature and it, it's updated on every solution step. And uh, many other uh, properties, um, um, elongation, material elongation, or any other depends on the temperature. Uh, also, well, the boundary condi conditions that could be convective, conductive, and radiation. Uh, and can be applied to any type of element, solid, beams, or, or cells. Uh, uh, the, the, the solution can be non-linear uh, steady state or transient, and it is copal analysis. Well, it could be um, thermal analysis only, structural only, or completely copal. And after solving it, uh, we have post-processing uh, results from the heat transfer analysis and also from the uh, structural analysis together, temperature, thermal flux, and thermal gradients uh, with vector plots also. Well, um, this webinar, uh, in this webinar, we are going to present uh, uh, three different examples. The first example is a steel column. First, we are going to, per to perform only um, thermal analysis. Uh, so we can, uh, we can design uh, the, the, the fire, uh, the fire um, isolation uh, around the steel part. Uh, we can check the, the thickness of this isolation, uh, checking time for, um, for the steel part to get uh, certain temperatures to, to allow to keep it under, under that uh, allowable temperature for a certain time. So we can design the thickness considering that. And after that, uh, we are going to solve, uh, we are going to see a completely couple uh, structural thermal analysis where the column uh, uh, just uh, uh, a non-linear buckling analysis with uh, structural and thermal loads. And after a, after a transit analysis, after a while, uh, the columns, uh, uh, the, due to the, this temperature, the yielding point is reduced and the columns uh, 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 gets back. And after that, we are going to see to apply this, um, this, um, these steps to a building. So we are going to apply this, these temperatures on different parts of the building, different zones, and we are going to check time for the building to collapse. So uh, we can see with this type of analysis, we can guarantee uh, that time for evacuating the building be before the building collapse. 
And the last, the last example we are going to see is the concrete, a concrete beam model. It is a, com a completely nonlinear concrete model with cracking, crushing, and nonlinear uh, stress-strain relationship for compression and for tension. And in that model, we are going to apply some structural loads. It is going to, to crack a little bit. And then we are going to apply the fire, and the, 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 the concrete beam is going to co collapse. So, well, um, first. Um, First example is this steel column where we are going to solve a transit thermal analysis and uh, just uh, analyze the thermal uh, thickness. So well, um, here is the, um, the model. And well, uh, this is the model uh, we have we have generated, and these are the two structural elements. Uh, well, for the for the new people that are seeing civil firm by the first time, civil firm um, it's a very easy to use uh, uh, software. Uh, it is um, uh, a nonlinear um, general purpose um, civil uh, structural and geotechnical software, and uh, with multiple applications for civil engineering. One of those is is this one. It is very easy to use. There are different tabs to generate the model, starting by the geometry model, uh, generated the elements, mess, apply loads, and so on. We have, um, we will see at the end, um, some places where you can download a um, educational version and several examples to uh, learn to how to use the software. Uh, well, just focusing this model, we have uh, generated two structural elements. One of them is the isolation part. Uh, this, is, uh, this is isolation, uh, uh, isolation elements that cover the steel part. And here is the steel part. So well, um, if we plot both, here uh, in this model, what we have done is first to apply um, initial temperature, initial condition, thermal initial condition, that is 20, 20 degrees to both structural elements. After this, we have applied a, a boundary conditions around that, that is about a thermal boundary conditions using the Eurocode um, um, load, the Eurocode, I'm going to show it, the Eurocode load due to a fire that follows this, this, um, this curve, starting with uh, uh, 600 degrees and being increased by this load uh, considering this time. And, uh, we have solved until uh, 150 minutes. So well, these boundary conditions are applied to the outside part. So here in loads, we can see boundary conditions, thermal boundary conditions on the mesh. So we can see this red point are where these loads are applied, these thermal uh, initial conditions. And, and the solution where we have applied these thermal uh, loads, we can see here the boundary conditions and these loads. So for solving, we have here solving the configuration, we, we can solve different types. We can solve st structural analysis, thermal analysis, or thermal structural couple analysis. We can solve uh, all these, these options. So first here we have applied these uh, secondary conditions and then we have solved, uh, we have solved uh, the model. Um, so well, uh, for checking the results, we can go to the civil processor history plots and get here these results we have previously solved. Now for plotting uh, results, uh, uh, history results, that is uh, any value from versus time, I have to select uh, first the, the element I would like to plot the results from. I'm going to, to select here first the selection of the element, and I'm going to plot an example result from this element, from this corner, from the steel, that is the element uh, 176, copy that value, so well, here it is going to be a end result from the element, from this element, and integration point, there are several integration points from this element, and the value I would like to plot is temperature. It's going to be uh, degrees centigrees versus uh, 
versus time in minutes. So in this in this way, I'm going to plot the graph of of this um, of this value. Here I can see I have the curve curve of this temperature versus time for the time I have solved 160 minutes. So I can see the temperature that is uh, that, uh, for the um, for the steel part the temperature versus time. Well, and, and I could apply, I could analyze this value. This is the temperature versus time that we got inside the inside the steel. So with this analysis, we can um, with this analysis we uh, design the thickness of the of the fire protection. Well, after this, we can solve a completely couple uh, thermal analysis. For that results, I'm going to open again. Well, now in this case, what we have done, the difference between this case and and the other and the other case, is uh, here you can see we have solved two different uh, two different uh, uh, load steps. The first step is applying only a structural loads. We have applied a structural load on top. I'm going to plot it. Well, here you can see we have applied a structural load that is a combination of a bending moment and an axial force. And also here we have added boundary conditions which are completely constrained at the bottom, completely constrained at the bottom and just uh, uh, avoiding uh, horizontal displacement on top but uh, just constraining a horizontal displacement on top and allowing vertical deformation. So these are the structural loads we have applied to the model. So well, uh, here then with the um, with the um, thermal loads, the thermal loads are exactly the same as the uh, in the previous model. This is the isolation material, and we have applied. Uh, loads, the loads are the boundary conditions, the thermal boundary conditions on this surface where you can see the red. These boundary conditions are, as we saw before, these are the boundary conditions, this is the temperature for the first minute we have the ambient temperature 20 degrees and this is the Eurocode 2 Zero code three, uh, the, well, zero code one loads due to this um, to this fire, the temperature uh, versus time. So in this case, for the solution, in the solution, what we are applying, as we saw before, we can apply structural thermal, thermal structural and copel analysis, and thermal structural copel analysis. We have all these options. For the option of, for the option of, um, of thermal and structural, we are solving only structural or thermal analysis, not couple. If we solve this other option that, that is thermal, structural and couple, first thermal analysis is solved from the beginning till the end. Temperatures are uh, obtained and applied to the model. And then uh, structural analysis is solved, but uh, with an extra load that is temperature on the model. And for the thermal structural copel analysis, what Sibylfem does is solving step by step. First, a structural, uh, first a thermal um, analysis. Then those temperatures are applied to the model. The model is solved with the structural and thermal analysis. The, the structural stresses and well, uh, damage, possible damage on the model is obtained, and the model is updated. And then the thermal uh, analysis is solved. In this case, what we have done is solve the complete copel analysis. So well, uh, we solve step by step, and we get different results. We can get uh, results from thermal analysis, and we can get also results from uh, from the uh, structural analysis. First, we have applied a first load step with 
uh, ambient temperature only 20 degrees for the first minute and only the structural uh, loads are applied on the model. For, so for that situation we can see, I'm going to just uh, hide the um, I'm going to hide the, in this case, the um, isolation material that is not structural, so it is not generating any uh, structural uh, uh, stresses or any data, so we are avoiding to plot those, uh, that, that material. For now, I'm going only to plot the steel part. So we can see this, this column, and uh, after applying those loads, I'm going to plot, in example, um, uh, uh, stresses on the model for Mrs. Stress, for Mrs. Equivalent Stress, and here we can see that, well, this is the maximum stress we are getting in megapascals. Well, we can see 87 megapascals in this point due to these structural loads. Okay, well, after this, as we saw before, we apply the thermal loads. Uh, these thermal loads, uh, well, as the materials are material temperature dependent, the, uh, and it is a non-linear non -linear analysis. Here we can see linear, this is non-linear analysis, megapascals, and for every temperature there's a different, a different low, stress-strain relationship, and civil FEM is updating on every step, considering these uh, stress-strain relationships temperature dependence, that you can see the, 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 this, this curve depends on the temperature, and they follow the Eurocode 3, the Eurocode 3 and Eurocode 2 lows, so uh, the material property is updated considering the temperature we have on every step, and in that way we, we perform the nonlinear analysis. So well, um, for those results, uh, here results, structural them, we get Structural plus thermal analysis. In example, if I plot this this load step, we can see that now I'm going to plot displacement on y direction, and we can see well uh, we are having. I'm going to reduce the scale, and we can see that. It is. It start having due to the temperature. It start having yielding at different parts, and uh, then buckling is happening. Uh, the model was solved until it stopped converging. It is, is the the non-converging uh, step is where the column has buckling uh, buckling problems. Here we can see the resumes of what we have solved in minutes. So we can see that the model stopped converging after 162 minutes. In that position, when it is stopped converging, we can see, well, this, this is the, the scale of the, the form it saved is, is 10, so I'm going to reduce the scale to 2, in example, for being easy to see. So this is the backlink shape that we are having after 162 minutes. And we also can plot, in example, strains. Here we can plot equivalent plastic strain that is happening due to this uh, due to these thermal loads. Here we can see main uh, yielding is happening here, and also we can see we have a generalized backlink, uh, generalized uh, um, yielding in most of the of the column. So well, you can see the difference between this after 162 minutes of fire and the initial, the initial um, step where before uh, the fire start, start, start. There is no yielding. The, 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 the stresses are uh, 87 megapascals, very far from the yielding point. But due to these thermal loads, the yielding point is reduced, the yielding stress and then a backlink is happening from here to the other point. We have generated a video here for this, for this model, and you can see the, the evolution of the, 
evolution of the uh, of the column due to these thermal loads. So well, um, this is one of the options we have. Uh, the other option to check our our uh, our model, our building in this case, is to analyze the whole building. From this, from this, uh, from this first method, what I was doing is just a detailed column. I was applying just the the, the boundary conditions that is fire around the solution the solution material, and we perform a nonlinear transit analysis, uh, co coupled thermal and structural, and just get time before buckling happens, before collapse. That is a procedure, and we could solve one by one all the columns with the loads we have, and we can check time for uh, collapsing every column or we can analyze all together in the building. For this case we have a building that is modeled with beam elements. The previous models were modeled with solid elements. What I'm doing in this case is extracting this low time versus temperature from the steel part, from the steel analysis. So here we, we can see that here one of their time history Results is here an example in this element in one of these elements I can get temperature versus time. And result this element integration point one in example and result I'm going to plot is temperature versus time in minutes. So well if I plot it if I get this result here I can see I have this curve. This curve which is temperature versus time at this integration point in this column. So what I can do with civil film is export this, this table. I can export it into a table, copy and paste it into the into the uh, structural model. This is the one. So here what I can do is that that the table is copy and paste here. So well different different graphs, different temperature versus time loads. And what I do is extracting from those columns and apply to these points. So I can perform different uh, detailed analysis with the isolation system in some uh, solid elements, get temperature versus time in the steel part and apply them to a big model like this. The whole model with beam elements. What I'm doing is extracting temperature from integration points and applied here to this section in the integration point of the sections. I could, uh, for simplify the model, what I've done is supposing a constant temperature in all the, all the section, not a variation in the steel thickness. The variation is very low because conductivity in steel is very high, so I've applied that, that, that in this, this table, this this uh, these temperatures and the different parts, these columns and these beams. And then what I have done is to solve a, a, a transient a structural plus a thermal analysis and uh, just applying this, this, these temperatures and also getting time for collapse this building. I have solved two different models. Here you can see this first model I have applied the these loads to this part and in the other model in this other model I have applied to the bottom part to this corner so well I have two different models two different fire zones and I'm going to analyze time before collapse of them in the first if I, I have solved here you can see 20 minutes 20 minutes for collapse and just checking results um, if I check the results I can see after solving it that this model stopped converging after 184 minutes. It means that the model collapsed at that point. If I'm going to plot the results, I 
can see these placements I can see here an example uh, strain equivalent plastic strain and with the deformed shape I can see that apl after applying that fire I have here in these zones yielding and buckling in all these columns at the bottom and I can see that the building is collapsing it's collapsing uh, just because the instability of, of it in the other model which is this one the fire was applied to this red zone that fire was applied from the, the previous model obtaining the, the temperature versus time due to that isolation zones and applied to this to this part so in this case in the results if we get the information of the results we can see that the model is solved after the 200 minutes I have solved only uh, a load step with this temperature for 200 minutes and I can see the model is converging until the end so it means it is not collapsing before 200 minutes and I'm going also to plot the last step and to check uh, equivalent plastic strain strain and equivalent plastic strain so well here you can see that here I'm having jailing but in this case it is not uh, collapsing at this time well I'm going to plot the form with shape I can see you can see here I'm going to reduce the scale see this for 30 I'm going to reduce the scale till 10 to see the deformation but not so big so we, ca we can see there is yielding problems there are some buckling problems on these columns but due to the rest of the columns and the rest of the building the building is not collapsed this part is, is uh, the, the rest of the structure is collaborating there is no yielding in the rest of the steel part and the building is not collapsed so in this way I can design my, my structure just analyzing different uh, uh, fire zones and uh, improving my design considering in which zones the building can, can collapse due to the fire and in which one uh, it is not collapsing and improved in the worst part as I saw in an example these corners where uh, the fire will generate a collapse uh, with only 180 minutes I should improve here my uh, protection for fire and my structure in other zones uh, it is not generating collapse because of the contribution of the rest of the structure and well and uh, just I, I don't need to improve in those zones my fire uh, resistance I'm uh, going to show you some videos well this is the first video and here you can see in this video due to the fire in these zones that it is generating here some buckling problems to these columns but the the structure is not collapsing and in the other model here you can see the fire is applied to these zones and here you can see in the videos that it is generating buckling and it is collapsing the, 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 the building because it stopped converting at 184 uh, minutes so well uh, with these two different methods I can I can check the, the, the fire resistance and time for evacuating the building with uh, just a detailed model with solid elements and applying uh, just those isolation material and taking temperature in the steel part or I can solve the whole model importing those uh, temperatures from the detailing model to the beam element model and solve the global behavior of the structure due to this fire now well the last example we are going to see is the concrete beam in this case we are going to solve a completely non-linear concrete model in this case it is going to be a simply supported beam where I have here a five meters span model uh, with a, a distributed and a point load this, this section is uh, 30 centimeter and uh, 60 centimeter the, the, the dimensions and well I have uh, three bars at bottom uh, the diameter is 18 millimeters and two bars 16 millimeters at top and also I have 
20 bars of uh, for the CR um, for the CR um, uh, resistance. I'm going to show you the model because this model have previous uh, solve it. This model has several uh, several capabilities to to have to see. Well, first you can see in my model for the bending bars. I've generated those bending bars with solid elements. Uh, those are very important for this model. So I've generated do those beam, those um, those uh, bars with solid elements inside the concrete, and I have added a contact uh, a contact between the steel and the concrete part. For def defining the contacts, it's very easy, and those contacts are both thermal and structural analysis as structural behavior. So it's very easy to generate those contacts. Here, I just select contact in this zone, and I, the contacted part would be the concrete. Then I select the contacted, that will be my three bars. I should select them all, click OK, and then here I select the properties. The default one is the glue, the contact glue that is going to, to be uh, between both. It can be this contact type structural, thermal, or structural thermal. If, I, if it is a structural thermal, I have to define properties from both. I'm going to leave it glue for thermal. It means transmission of temperature is happening. And for, uh, for the structural part, it could be glue. It is uh, working together always. Or it could be breaking contact uh, or cohesive contact. If I would like to analyze the possible slippage between the steel and the concrete, setting that, that low. So uh, I could solve a nonlinear analysis considering a possible slippage due to the failure of the corroded uh, bars and the concrete. Well, in this case, I'm going to uh, to solve completely glue. And well, as they are not so important for me, uh, also I have modeled the um, CR, the CR uh, reinforcement bars. But uh, in this case, they are modeled with beam elements instead of solid elements and well uh, here you can see i have a lot and i don't have a congruent mesh it means it means uh, there is not a match between the the shear reinforcement nodes and the and the solid elements so uh, from concrete so i cannot merge nodes but for working them together in the same way i added contact elements between for the bending reinforcement for the CRL elements as it is not congruent mesh what I'm doing is inserting them that is another capability of civil fem that I can insert in this in this point insert the steel reverse inside concrete and this is going to when I make this insertion they are going to work together it means a structural in the structural part the elements that are the steel elements that are inserted in the solid concrete elements, they are going to work together. And also for the thermal part, the temperature is going to be considered the transmission of temperature from the concrete to the steel part. So in this way, I'm solving a complete copal analysis from both, uh, from both parts, uh, with contact, contact elements between the concrete and the part, and with the insertion. I don't have any type of, mer uh, of matching or any type of uh, contacted surface. And then, in this case, what I have done is in the same way uh, I did with the with the structural the the previous uh, steel column. What I'm doing in this in this model is solving first two different loads. Here you can see I have first a structural load that is solved for five minutes, and then a thermal load. Here you can see the thermal load. In this case is acting after five minutes with an ambient temperature of 20 and also i am following the same uh, euro code one cure for fire this is the cure that i have in, uh, i've used and for 155 minutes and for this first five minutes what i'm doing is applying the structural loads so well for the structural loads i'm going to select These structural loads were solved in 10, 10 minutes. And I'm going to, to select here. 
an example the uh, stresses, the von Mises stress in the model. Von Mises equivalent stress. Here you can see that I have a well in megapascals. Well, you can see I have 146 megapascals maximum stress on the concrete part. I can see I have three zones, the bending enforcement here, three zones with higher, the higher um, stress. Well, if I plot a cracking, I'm going to plot this, the concrete part, the whole model. And in this case, I'm going to plot crack strain in X direction. X component of cracking strain. And here you have, can see I have three cracks, or four cracks, some due to this, this load. They are very small, but the plot is plotting uh, just with, it is plot on the element, so depends on the, on the, on the element size, you can see this plot like higher or lower, but the crack strain is, is low. So this is the initial crack, cracks that are generated by these structural loads. Then I'm going to apply it, I'm going to apply it to this model the thermal loads. Before applying this, I'm going to show you uh, that here, the concrete, the concrete behavior that I'm, I'm using. For this concrete behavior, I have said that I have cracking stress for uh, this, uh, for this um, uh, um, tension stress. Uh, this is the this this crack stress is the is obtaining from the Eurocode. I'm using a, a Eurocode concrete that is C3037, and this is the crack strain. Also, I have the nonlinear uh, values for the uh, for the structural part, which is the cracking. Also, the CR for tension factor, which means the crack the crack stiffness for CR which is the, um, mainly due to the friction, and also a, a softening modulus. This softening modulus is the behavior after cracking. Also, this can be modified and set by hand, and, uh, well, if I have an example, um, a fiber reinforced concrete, I could add that, uh, that behavior due to, this, to these fibers. So I, I should set here variable, variable softening, and it could have a hardening and softening behavior. This is for structural parts. For the thermal parts, well, here I have the heat transfer properties that are, uh, could be, um, could be um, constant or temperature dependent. For the temperature dependent, I have here a table. Also, well, these tables, these tables uh, are temperature dependent, uh, dependent tables and can be modified by the user and the user can use the Eurocode values. This is for the uh, thermal conductivity, and this other is for the um, for the specific heat that the values I am using. Here you can see, well, I'm, I am using these values. Uh, well, there are uh, the 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 Eurocode to specify different options for different concrete types, different uh, uh, water contain of the concrete and this arrange for thermal conductivity and also for the specific heat. I've used uh, different options and, uh, well, in this case, I've solved uh, this model. So, well, first, the results uh, we can see. I'm going to take all the information of all the results and I can see that, well, in minutes, sorry, I can see that the model stopped solving after 110 minutes. It means that after 210 minutes, the almost 10 minutes, the beam is is uh, collapsing. 
uh, cracking is happening, yielding in the steel, and the model is collapsing. So well, before that, I'm going to plot. Um, I'm going to plot uh, temperature values on the section. Here, odors and temperature values in degrees centigrade at integration point. Well, I can see that here the model is starting with 20 degrees plot. So here you, you can see that my default value, my ambient temperature is 20 degrees. And from here I start applying the thermal loads to the uh, to the to the to the boundaries that are all the surfaces. And you can see how the temperature is increased. Well here you can see that temperature is in this case 160 in the exterior part and the interior part keep, keeps on 20. So well uh, I can so I can check in example the uh, R30, 60 and 90 that is the temperature distribution inside for 30, 60 and 90 minutes. So for that I'm going to check which load step correspond to that time. As I have five minutes without thermal loads, I have to add five minutes. So for um, the load step 65, correspond to uh, 30 minutes of fire. It's being plot. So after 30 minutes of fire, this is the temperature distribution. Outside is uh, about uh, nine, uh, 900 degrees, and inside in the center, it's about 40, about uh, yes, 40, 40 degrees. And we have this distribution. Well, I have different setting options. I can plot it in a discontinuous way, and I can modify my, my range to being able to plot this to being able to get a better idea of the temperature and how it is affecting to my section. Well, this could be plot for a, also an example 90 minutes, 90 minutes, which should be 95, correspond to load step 72. So if I plot load step 72, I get the temperature variation. Well, here you can see now I have inside the concrete about 80 degrees and these different zones, 200, 300 and something, 600, and outside I have about 930. Well, this is the stress distribution. Um, I'm going to plot the last steps of the model for the structural part. The model is stop solving in, in the step uh, 117. Uh, 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 so I'm going to plot this one, an example. I'm, I'm going to plot structural values, structural results. In example, I'm going to plot cracking strain. X component of cracking strain. And well, here I can see I have big cracking uh, strains on the model. This I have a, here a huge crack strain. And well, I'm going to modify settings for a continuous plot instead of this continuous plot. And I can see the crack strain is is the maximum crack strain is uh, about uh, uh, well 0 0.13 that it is on the support here in the support and it is in the bottom concrete is uh, gets a really softening value because it's uh, about uh, 100 degrees and here I can plot the in the analysis uh, diagrams that are these are degrees versus megapascals these are the curves that are used for solving we can see that with that higher temperature that is about 900, which is this blue line, the concrete uh, gets a really high softening value, the elasticity of the modulus is very low, and here in these points and the supports there's a big damage. 
where the biggest results are getting. And in, in, the, in the center here, I'm going to plot uh, just to modify the range for VNH able to, to get a better, a better view of, this, of these cracks, reducing the scale a little bit. I'm plotting the results. And well, here we have, we can see big cracks. Maybe I can increase a little bit because this is very low. And also I'm going to plot with the deformation shape. And well, you can see that in the last steps, this deformation shape and these cracks are increased a lot and just these are the last steps before collapse. This increase and the last step when it is collapsing. This loading the results and here you can see the last step with a big crack and I'm going, going to also to plot yielding values on, on the steel bars. Uh, well, uh, the steel stress we saw before it was not very big, but due to these thermal loads, this um, this uh, uh, this uh, yielding limit is is reduced, and it is start yielding due to the temperature. So here, if I plot equivalent plastic strain, we can see now that we have big. Um, jailing zones on the uh, bending reinforcement. Also at some in the bending reinforcement we have generalized jailing in these zones. Also at in some CR bars also we have some jailing and this is the last step before collapse. We can see that collapse is happening after 210 minutes. And just if I use my slides, here I have also generated a video from those results. With civil films you can generate videos. And here you can see that I have first the video from Yaelin, as it is being increased, the Yaelin. And collapse, and here the same values, but for cracking. Here we can see cracking is starting, it is increasing due to this uh, temperature and collapse is happening. Well, just as resume of, of this, of this uh, webinar, you can see with civil FEM we can apply thermal orthotropic material properties, thermal conductivity and specific heat. Also the material nonlinear behavior are all properties are temperature dependent properties, both concrete and steel. And well, we can apply the uh, temperature loads that can be convective, conductive or radiation boundary conditions or any type of elements and we can solve nonlinear steady state or transit analysis, completely couple and get those results. Well, this uh, here with this uh, this thermal advanced structural analysis, uh, not we can not only solve uh, fire uh, protection analysis. This could be applied to many type of of uh, of uh, civil structural analysis. In example, uh, we can solve thermal stress uh, in concrete of heat and heat hydration of early age, con uh, early age concrete for the first days, in example, when we are constructing a, a dam. Here, the temperature due to the maturing of the concrete, we can analyze those temperatures and see if we, have, we are having some crackings. Also, well, I've, I've just, you can see this, this, this model of temperature on concrete and, and steel for thermal protection, also ambient temperature and sun radiation on dams to see if they are generating cracking. So we can solve all thermal plus structural uh, nonlinear or linear analysis for the uh, structural uh, civil engineering uh, uh, part. Well, um, if you have any doubt, you can contact us for, for having some, some more information. If you would like to try the software, you can download a demo version and also you can get some examples and training about civil film. Yes. We have, uh, thank you, Roman, for your uh, lecture. 
Um, about the training, uh, we have many ways to share our knowledge. One is uh, through the UNED. Uh, after 27 or 26 uh, courses, now we are starting the 27th edition for this 2021 uh, with more than 4,000 already registered uh, engineers. Uh, we, we will cover both uh, theor theoretical with fundamentals and practice with the software. The registration is still open until February, so you can uh, you can uh, register uh, just uh, now. The other way of, of training is uh, through our uh, educational center for uh, CEA uh, simulations. Uh, is e-learning uh, e e-learning um, <clears throat> with a flexible schedule, uh, just uh, covering the practice with the software and. Uh, Besides uh, many uh, many courses, uh, including uh, uh, several uh, FEA packages, we have the free FEM course and the advanced FEM course. Uh, this uh, the free course will include this uh, one of these uh, interesting webinar examples with a thermal steel column. And the, in the advance, it will cover, it will include more complex examples, and not only thermal, of course, uh, including dy dynamic, um, nonlinear, uh, geotechnical examples, and of course, you can uh, get more info in this in this uh, uh, website. And uh, it will include as well in the advance in both courses, uh, educational version uh, without any uh, node limit uh, restriction. Uh, besides, we have as well, uh, uh, besides training, uh, if you are interested in our consulting, consultancy projects, we have uh, many, uh, many, uh, may, uh, a team uh, uh, with a lot of expertise. So uh, if you need uh, any uh, con consultancy uh, uh, project or any uh, advice, uh, please uh, contact uh, us as well as we uh, cover many, many fields. So uh, please, uh, if you are, uh, want to follow us in your social media, uh, stay always tuned. Uh, this is our, our links for our cyber website or civil femme software, if you need more, more info about uh, the capabilities. And please, uh, once the uh, webinar ends, you will have a survey. Please uh, help us to improve uh, our webinars and our, our software. So thank you very much. And you can place your questions in this uh, uh, Q&A tool. Thank you. Bye-bye.